Now, so back when I was in my late teens, I could easily spend three, four hour blocks at a time practicing guitar. And that was my prime. That's when I acquired all the things that I do today. Three decades later, today, things are very different. Unfortunately, all I have is a few minutes here, a few minutes there with, with the guitar. And I know I'm not alone. That's probably you. Now, for a long time, I thought that I just had to come to terms with this and that my prime on the guitar was over and whatever skills I had acquired in my late teens were the skills I would have to be content with for the rest of my life. And so for many years, my practice looked like this. I would grab the guitar, throw in a backing track and just kind of use those things that I had learned way back and just make them a little bit more musical. But there was really no growth at all. Now in parallel to playing guitar, I also started a business and I stumbled upon this article and this article was talking about the 80-20 rule. In a nutshell, the rule says that 80% of your growth is a direct result of only 20% of your actions. That got me thinking and I decided to apply that to my guitar practice. So I went back to my early practice journals and I realized that the 80-20 rule applied there so well. See, back then I would spend hours working on micro techniques, very little things that in the grand scheme of things are not very important. So I thought to myself, what if during my very limited time in practice, I spent 100% of that practice time on that 20%. That could work. So I came up with a plan. I started with a massive brainstorm session and I wrote down a little post-its, every single thing that was important in my playing today. Tons of words, all these words that came to mind, I scripted them and I didn't put any thought to it. I just wrote down all these words and post-its. And then I started organizing these words. And as I did that, I started seeing three main categories, buckets. And eventually I understood that anything that didn't fit these buckets were not part of my 20% that I had to focus on. So there it was. If I picked up the guitar, I had to work within these three buckets. All right, so at that point, I was ready to come up with a real practice plan. Now there's a lot of ways to doing that, but I'm gonna tell you the absolute best way to design your practice plan from these themes is to use the interconnectivity framework. So basically that framework makes your time a lot more efficient. And that's because you are working on the same exact thing, but you're approaching it from different angles three different angles. So let's do that together. I'm gonna to plan my next practice session. In front of me, I have all those things I could work on. So on my sheet of paper, I'm gonna create three different columns. These columns correspond to the three buckets, the three themes that came out from that massive brainstorm session. We're gonna label these buckets T, T, M. I, I wish I had another T, but I don't. Technique, theory, musicality. Now this is where a lot of people get stuck when designing their plans. They don't know which item to take. Now here's the thing, and I know this by experience, whatever you start working on is gonna open new doors. It always happens. These doors are gonna naturally lead you towards the next thing you need to work on. Now think of something you'd love to do, something you like the sound of. It could be a piece of a song, a lick, a scale, whatever it is. For me, I'm gonna pick this fusion lick I really like. Always loved that lick, always wanted to play that way, but never really developed it. So we'll take that. Now from that thing we're gonna work on, we're gonna extract different tasks. These tasks are gonna be placed in the three different columns. We need to make sure to have at least one task per column. Now the number of tasks you're gonna put on your sheet is gonna depend on how much time you can realistically spend practicing your guitar. And here's a tip, I recommend you aim for the lower side. It's better to have less to work on and really do it than too much and feel a sense of frustration because you weren't able to accomplish all these tasks. All right, so we have this lick, which is gonna be the object of our practice. In the technique column, I might put something like learn the lick. 
So really the technique column is whatever you do on the instrument. It has to do with the physical aspect of playing. And because we're using the interconnectivity framework, I'm gonna take that same exact task, which is learning to lick, and try to come up with something that I could place in the theory column. Now the theory column has to do with things that are more brain involved, analyzing that idea, trying to understand that musical concept so that you can reuse it later. So I'm just gonna put analyze the lick. And I know that that means figuring out what scale is being used, which chord I can play the lick over, all those things that have to do with brain and theory. And finally, I'm gonna create a task that also has to do with that lick and place it in the musicality column. This is where the rubber meets the road. You're going to take that thing that you've been working on and try to make it your own. So for me, I'm just gonna put jam using the lick. So I'll just throw in a backing track, jam over this and try to use that lick in my own way. Try to spend an equal amount of time in each column. As you are working through this lick in the three different buckets, you will get some new ideas as you're working on this, new questions, and I want you to take these ideas, these questions, and plan your next session around those questions. And remember the step where I wrote on post-its all these different themes? Well, that could take a while. I have something that's gonna help you with that. It takes five minutes. It's a very simple quiz. I'll ask you the questions. And if you're super honest when you answer, I'll tell you exactly what you need to work on next. Click right here to take a quiz and know exactly what you should work on next.